we have been discussing the assertion that Sikhi, as it is practiced today, is no longer the Sikhi that was gifted to us by our Gurus. It is a spirituality that stands distorted, corrupted and tainted. Our scripture, Gurbani, has been distorted through Vedic and Puranic slants in interpretations and translations. Our history has been muddled in unbelievable tales of miracles called Sakis. The general conduct of Sikhi has come to be dictated by a clergy class and our religious practices consist primarily of those smuggled in from rejected and discarded rituals of the pre-1469 belief systems. In short, Pyareo, Sikhi today stands as a faith that has been hijacked from its unique path and equally distinct goals. Three powerful groups, all of which were fake, deviant and or anti-Sikhi, conducted this hijacking, by which is meant the distorting, the corrupting and the contaminating of Guru Nanak's divine spirituality. These groups did so by controlling our institutions, our literature, our historical narratives and our Gurdwaras, and by extension, the fate and psyche of Sikhi for a long period of 207 years from 1718 till 1925. The first group is the Udasis, the followers of the disowned son of Guru Nanak, Sri Chanda. This Udasi group had exclusive control of Sikh Gurdwaras for the first 60 years beginning 1718. The second group, a more powerful, more deviant and more capable group, namely the Nirmalas, took over from the Udasis for almost one century. The Nirmalas, on account of their Banaras education, experience and backing of their Brahmin roots, infiltrated into the inner sanctums of the Sikh psyche namely our philosophy, our literature and Gurbani interpretation and translation. In today's video, Pyareo, we will examine the damage done to authentic Sikhi by the Nirmalas through the corruption of Sikh history. The foundation of the Nirmala corruption of our history was laid in a massive 14 volume granth or text named Suraj Prakash. The Suraj Prakash presents Sikh history that covers a period of 250 years, which is the entire 10 Guru period. Two and a half centuries of our history is presented in the form of distorted, corrupted, and Brahmanized concocted stories. This Granth, the Suraj Prakash Granth, thus stands as the epitome of Nirmala distortion. It was authored in 1843 by Nirmala Pai Singh, a shining star and doyen of the Nirmala sect. The full name of the text is Sri Gurpratap Surja Prakash, but it is commonly known simply as the Surja Prakash Granth. The phrase used in the title means the epicenter or the epitome of enlightenment Prakash. The title itself, as we shall see from an examination of some of its contents, reflects the colossal and monumental distortion that the Nirmalas intended to inflict upon Sikhi. 
the 14 volumes of Surya Prakash, however, throw ample light, ample Prakash on how determined this group of people was in its quest to hijack Sikhi. This is perhaps the most voluminous and largest text of Sikh history, albeit distorted. Woven cleverly into the hijacked version of Sikh philosophy. Given this lethal combination of distorted history and distorted philosophy, the Suraj Prakash stands as the root instrument pertaining to the Nirmala hijacking and distortion of Sikhi. It is written in complicated bridge poetic language with a hefty use of Sanskrit. It is composed with a complete Brahmanical and Vedic slant, with Sanatan gods and goddesses woven into virtually every chapter, every section and subsection. The subject matter of the Surya Prakash comprises the lives of the ten gurus and the story of Baba Banda Singh Bahadur covering a period of two and a half centuries from 1469 all the way down till 1718. The chapter on Guru Nanak is given special emphasis as if to root Brahmanical beliefs into the origins of Sikhi right from 1469 itself. The organization and structure of the text is reflective of pure Brahmanism. Its 51,829 verses are divided into portions based on rot or seasons and according to the 12 signs of the zodiac. Using the metaphor of Suraj, that is the sun, the text is further divided into sections called Arisu or Rays. The sections are named after the 12 signs of the zodiac, the six seasons and the two solstices of winter and summer, which in turn comprise 1151 sunbeams, each one comprising one chapter. As said above, this organization and structure of the text is highly reflective of deep-seated Brahmanical values. The poetry of the text is complex and this is by design to allow only the clergy to be able to interpret it. The clergy interprets it according to the level of acceptability of the masses. The subject matter is blasphemous at times and the clergy were expected to judge their audiences and skip these parts as and when necessary. Now the Suraj Prakash was translated exhaustively into prose everyday common Punjabi, first by the Nirmala Pai Veer Singh in a 14 volume edition published during the period 1927 to 1935. And at around the same time, Nirmala Gyani Gyan Singh had written a text called the Surya Prakash Vartak, which was a version in prose in Punjabi of the Surya Prakash Granth. The Surya Prakash Vartak of Gyani Gyan Singh was translated into modern Punjabi by Sodi Teja Singh, the 33rd edition of which was published in 2017. It's a tragedy that Nirmala Pai Veer Singh is held in such high esteem in the Sikh world when his biggest contribution is to popularize the distortion of the lives of our Gurus. In essence, Veer Singh first brought the elitist Suraj Prakash 
into the grasp of the lay sick world. In other words, if Nirmala Santok Singh had kept the distortion covert or kept it hidden by camouflaging that distortion in complex poetry, it was Nirmala Pai Veer Singh who brought it out into the open, hence propagating the lies composed by his Nirmala Guru Santok Singh amongst the masses. Santok Singh's reason for keeping the Suraj Prakash covert in 1843 was perhaps the fear of a Sikh backlash then. Pai Veer Singh's effort gives credence to the fact that such fear had dissipated or disappeared in the 84 years that had lapsed, that had passed since the death of Nirmala Santok Singh or that Sikhs had simply lost the ability to distinguish between fact and fiction of the history of our Gurus in those 84 years. Paiveer Singh's act of translation of the Surj Prakash thus made it clear that mainstream Sikhi was now ready to accept the distortion of Surj Prakash. Vast number of Sikh historians such as Principal Satbir Singh have relied on the Surj Prakash in writing their own historical narratives without making any attempt to weigh the Surj Prakash's contents against the principles of Sikhi, the principles of Gurmat and the philosophy of Gurbani. Pyariyo, it actually took a non-Sikh historian, the New Zealand born and based William McLeod, to point out that the Suraj Prakash was ahistorical, meaning there was no history in it. He further said the Suraj Prakash was mythological and a totally untrustworthy source of Sikh history. Some elements within the Sikh Panth did come to recognize the distortion and corruption that is Surj Prakash. In the year 2004, the Taram Prachar Committee of the SGPC, acting on complaints from Sikh scholars and historians about the anti sikhi contents of this so-called classical text, launched what was then called the Sikh Sarot Ithihasik Granth Sampadana project. This project was given the task of freshly editing the Nirmala composed classical Sikhi texts and literature in order to present the correct version of the history of the Gurus. Dr. Kirpal Singh, a prominent historian and then chairman of the Institute of Gurmat Studies Chandigarh was tasked with the job. The Suraj Prakash was chosen first of all because of the severity of the disinformation contained in this epic and the sheer volume of the blasphemy within the Suraj Prakash. The edited version of volume 1 of the Suraj Prakash was published in 2009, but this project has been stalled and has not continued since. It is an indication of the Nirmala infiltration into Sikhi thought that the original Surj Prakash, despite the massive adulteration, remains the standard text for all Dera and Taksal trained clergy, namely our Granthis and our Kathakars in particular. It is usual for these Kathakars to hold serialized discourses on the text of Surj Prakash in Gurdwaras, normally in the afternoons or the evening Darbars. The serialized Katha of the distorted Surj Prakash Granth 
is done in the Darbar Sahib complex in Amritsar on a daily basis. It is perhaps a sign of the success of the Nirmalas that large number of Sikhs have chosen to partake in regular discourse of this deviant, distorted and blasphemous text instead of the enlightening Qurbani of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. This, despite the revelation by the learned scholars of Gurbani that the Surj Prakash is 95% in contradiction of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Such a state of affairs has led lay preachers such as Pai Ranjit Singh, Gani Lakhbir Singh of Brampton, Canada, Professor Indar Singh and many others to ask if we are Sikhs of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji or Sikhs of the Surj Prakash. The question that is in need of answering is whether the Surj Prakash is enlightenment as its name suggests or it is actually the abyss of darkness as its contents make absolutely clear. A sampling of the fake, mischievous and utterly blasphemous narratives of the Suraj Prakash is thus in order. Just 16 such narratives are provided here. 1. After refusing to wear the Janeu and after arguing about the futility of the practice and after composing voluminous Gurbani to that effect, the Surj Prakash claims that Guru Nanak ultimately wore the Janevu throughout his entire lifetime upon being convinced by the Pandit. Some 35 years later, when Guru Nanak visited Pai Lalo, again according to the Surj Prakash, Guru Nanak's Janevu was still worn on his physical body. 2. In Kurukshetar Mela, Guru Nanak is said to have hunted and cooked deer meat. When the Brahmins there took issue with it, Guru Nanak is said to have offered a variety of justifications to cover up his act, recited numerous Shabads even, but the Brahmins demanded that the Guru expose the contents of his cooking pot. When the lid was lifted, according to the Surj Prakash, the meat miraculously turned into kheer or rice pudding. 3. When Guru Nanak announced the date and time of his impending passing, large crowds gathered to weep and wail. His sister Nanaki is said to have come up and told Guru Nanak that the Hindu ritual of Shraddh or ancestor worship was just around the corner. Guru Nanak, realizing that he had overlooked this fact, then is said to have deferred or postponed his passing to after the occasion of ancestor worship. The narrative does not explain how someone could have known the date of his impending passing and not known the date of an upcoming ritual. For Guru Ram Das Ji is said to have gone to get the blessings of Sri Chand. The Guru is said to have prostrated or matha take before Sri Chand, done Kirtan while sitting lower than Sri Chand and then used his long beard to dust the feet of Udasi Sri Chand. 5. When Guru Arjan was composing the Poti Sahib, the four Vedas turned themselves into the ten parts and appeared in that physical form of ten parts before Guru Arjan. These ten parts then recited the Vedas which the Guru accepted as Gurbani and included it 
as one chapter in the Poti Sahib. 6. All 15 Pagats who wrote Bani or whose Bani appears in the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji is said to have appeared according to the Suraj Prakash before Guru Arjan when Poti Sahib was being composed. 7. The cause of Guru Arjan's martyrdom or Shahidi was a curse placed on the Guru by Udasi Sri Chand. According to the narrative of the Surj Prakash, one of Sri Chand's chelas had turned up at Guru Arjan's Darbar during the marriage ceremony of Bhargobind Parsha Ji and Mata Ganga Ji had served him langar. The mere act of a woman serving langar to an adasi had earned Guru Arjan Ji the wrath of the curse of Sri Chand. 8. When child Hargobind developed smallpox, Guru Arjan organized an event to worship goddess Sheetala Devi and composed Bani which is recorded on page 874 of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Khar pahan o chhar udhavai. You will note, Pyareo, that this Shabad is composed by Pagta Namdev and has absolutely nothing to do with Shitala Devi or any other Devi for that matter. 9. Guru Hargobind is said to have eloped with a married woman named Kala brought her to his darbar and married her. The already married Guruji was scolded by his mother for this act and according to the Surj Prakash, the Guru's reply was, I never did intend to do such an act, but I simply could not help it. Subsequently, Kaulan's father, a Kazi, would come to collect money for horses that was owed to him by Guru Hargobind Parsha. Baba Buddha is said to have received the Kaji and said the following verses as recorded in the Surj Prakash. Sun Bredha Pakhya Sej Subhai Tumre Gur Javai Ban Jai To Kaise Tan Laibo Tare Arpana Nej Tanja Kare Meaning, listen calmly to what I say, O Kazi. The Guru is now your son-in-law. Why then would you be entitled to any money? Just dedicate it to him on behalf of your daughter Kauna. Nirmala Santok Singh goes on to say that the Guru used to abandon the recitation of Sukhmani Bani midway to go and see Kaula whenever she desired the Guru. Pyareo, this is the kind of history or itihas of our Gurus that is contained within this so-called classical text called Surj Prakash. 10. Guru Gobind Singh is said to have prayed intensely to Chandi or Durga for one complete year. She appeared nude in front of the Guru to grant the Guru his wishes. She gave him the var or the boon that he will create a Keshatari people who would then flourish. And in return, according to Surj Prakash, Guru Gobind Singh promised to sacrifice his four sons and offer the blood of uncountable Sikhs in her name. Durga is said to have then blessed Guru Gobind Singh with a kard sword. One of her attendants gave the Guru a kashara, drawers. Guru Gobind Singh is said to have baptized Durga with pahul prepared by the same kard. Such a narrative is clearly in line with the Nirmala and Brahmanical agenda to hijack Sikhi 
into the Vedic quagmire. What better way to do such than to make Guru Gobind Singh a worshipper of Hindu gods and goddesses? 11. In getting Durga to appear before Guru Gobind Singh, the Guru relied on Pandit Kesavadas. This Pandit gave a mantra to the Guru to chant for a year. The mantra was Ona Ona Mona Mona Gona Gona Rona Gona Swaha. 12. In return for his services, Guru Gobind Singh blessed Kesav Das that he, meaning Kesav Das, would be reborn as Maharaja Ranjit Singh. 13. Guru Gobind Singh is said to have consumed marijuana regularly. When Pai Pachitar Singh offered to take on the elephant that was coming to tear down the walls of Anandapur, Guru Gobind Singh take, took out his personal box in which he kept his drug and gave Pai Pachitar Singh five masse, which was the board of measurement then. 14. Mai Pago is said to have come to see Guru Gobind Singh because she desired a child. She developed a love for the Guru. The Guru accepted her into his fold and she stayed naked with the Guru. 15. Once, when Guru Gobind Singh's sword slipped out of his sheath, the Guru asked his Sikhs for a string. Pai Daya Singh is said to have taken off his Janeyu and given it to the Guru who used it as a string. Pai Daya Singh then is said to have gone about without his Janeyu and was reprimanded by all the other Sikhs who were all wearing Janeyus too. When Pai Daya Singh took too long to get a replacement Janeyu, the Sikhs lodged a complaint with Guru Gobind Singh. 16. Guru Gobind Singh announced his date and time of passing and lit a huge bonfire. Large groups of Sikhs gathered to watch as Brahma, Vishnu and Shivji came together to take Guru Gobind Singh into the afterlife. As stated above, Pyario, these concocted blasphemous tales are simply a sampling. Nirmala Santok Singh thus stands as the lead hijacker of the Sikhi belief system and the Surja Prakash Granth stands as his primary weapon. He stands as the one Nirmala Doyan, an icon and an epitome of massive and the deepest corruption of the Sikh psyche. His success is unmatched. It is permanent, perhaps. Nirmala Santok Singh's adulteration of the Sikhi of our Gurus sits within the deepest recesses of the Sikh mind, Sikh institutions and our clergy. It is perhaps difficult to imagine that Sikhs will ever be able to free themselves from the shackles of the darkness that Nirmala Santok Singh transmitted upon the Sikh world through the Suraj Prakash. Two other educated, sophisticated and capable Nirmalas played an equally important role in ensuring that the seed of distortion and corruption within Sikh history as planted by Nirmala Santok Singh would continue to flourish within the psyches of the Sikh masses. Nirmala Gyani Gyan Singh and Nirmala Pai Veer Singh played major roles in making the Surja Prakash accessible to the Sikh masses. These two can be considered the primary disseminators of the work of Nirmala Santok Singh. Both of them did so by translating into Punjabi 
the complex bridge poetry that Nirbala Kavi Santok Singh deployed. Nirbala Gyani Gyan Singh did a three-volume translation of the Surj Prakash, while Nirbala Paiveer Singh, who did a 14-volume translation in Pajapi prose, would earn the honor of contributing towards the widest dissemination of the Surj Prakash. Beyond his dedication towards propagating the distortion of Santok Singh, Nirmala Paiveer Singh would go down in history of distortions of his own. He earned the credit of imposing the fakery of the Haim Kont narrative on the Sikh world. So powerful was Pai Veer Singh's literary skill and so strong his imagination that he was able to pinpoint the one exact location of a spot up in the Himalayan mountains where Guru Gobind Singh is said to have meditated. To find this exact spot, Nirmala Pai Veer Singh relied on just one fake statement within the Pachitra Natak Granth, a large portion of which Granth was itself composed by the Nirmalas. Pai Veer Singh was able to conjure up the truth of an exact but fake spot where Guru Gobind Singh going by the name of Dost Daman was said to have sat and meditated on Goddess Durga and Mahakal Shivji for hundreds of years in his previous life. The Pachitra Natak has just one statement pertaining to the location of that spot. Hema Kont Parbat Hai Jahan Sapt Saringa Sobat hai taha, meaning the Hemkont mountain is where there are seven peaks. Seven peaks are obviously visible across vast areas, hundreds of square miles, perhaps even thousands. But the literary giant and skillful wordsmith that Nirmala Pai Veer Singh was, he was able to provide the Sikh world from just this one fake statement, the exact historical spot of a narrative that was cooked up by the Nirmala hijackers to assimilate Guru Gobind Singh into the Brahmanical fold. Nirmala Pai Veer Singh is further single-handedly credited for the Sikh Pant's tragic inability to rid the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji of Ragmala. The Ragmala, as we know, Pyareo, is a non-spiritual, non-Gurbani composition that was added on as the one final page of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji by the Nirmala hijackers of Sikhi. The Sikh Panth had, in 1925, inspired by the Sikh reform movement led by Professor Gurmukh Singh come to a consensus to remove Ragmala from the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, but gave in to Pai Veer Singh's last minute insistence to hold on because he had just discovered clear historical evidence of Guru Arjan having composed Ragmala. It was yet another bluff of this Nirmala who had managed to paint himself within the Sikh world as a respectable laureate come historian. Needless to say, that clear historical evidence of Ragmala being written by Guru Arjan never came to light from Nirmala Pai Veer Singh. Unfortunately, the Sikh Panth has never been able to come together the way it did in 1925. The Sikh Panth thus remains saddled with the Ragmala tragedy, despite clear evidence that Ragmala is not Gurbani, is not spiritual in any way, 
and is devoid of any message worth talking about. Sikh history was not the only focus of Nirbala distortion, Pyareo. The next video will look at major Nirbala texts that played pivotal and crucial roles in distorting Gurbani to the max. The foundational text in distorting Gurbani is the monumental Farid Koti translation of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. That was undertaken by a group of Banaras based Nirbalas. I hope you will continue to join me in this extremely painful and dreadful but important endeavor relating to the systematic and organized hijacking of the Sikhi and spirituality of Guru Nanak.